Hi friends, today we are going to discuss an, another integrated case on the DAMS Unplugged series. Today with me I have Dr. Deepak, a very famous ENT faculty member and myself Dr. Sumer, will, I will be discussing the radiological finding of the disease and Deepak will be presenting the uh, clinical findings and how to look at a patient in an integrated fashion. That is our purpose of this video that where we should be able to give you a combined approach to the disease and you should be able to understand how an entire question is framed. I'll hand over to Deepak to talk about the case. Yeah. Hello doctors. Let us discuss with this clinical series of we are discussing the topic of angiofibroma. So the presentation is like always remember young boy because this tumor is somewhere related with the testosterone, testosterone dependent tumor. So always we suspect this tumor in a young boy who is complaining of nasal bleed. Always remember this point. Apostaxis is one of the chief complaint of this tumor with difficulty in breathing. These are the two prominent symptoms the patient comes to us. So on examination, if you see, we do entire rhinoscopy. So on the entire endoscopic examination, there will be secretions will be there. The nasal cavity will be full of secretions. Will, wherever the tumor will be there, there will be pressure effect on the septum. And if you see the other side of the nostril, the septum will be going down. Are you getting this point? Okay, the septum will be going because of pressure effect. So these are the two important findings on the entire rhinoscopy. So simultaneously when I go with the posterior rhinoscopy examination, on the posterior examination there will be a reddish mass which you will be seeing somewhere in the coinal area of in the posterior part of nose that is nasopharynx. So the mass will be coming from nasopharynx. Once we see this reddish mass, we always go in the favor of angiofibroma. Clear? Always remember this point. Now you people can have this line. This is a very simple line diagram I have drawn for you. On one side, can you appreciate nasopharynx is there? This is your nasopharynx. On the other side is the pterygopalatine fossa. These both are communicating somewhere with the sphenopalatine foramen. Very simple line diagram of a complicated anatomy. The tumor is specifically coming from this phenopalatine foramen. So can you appreciate this tumor have a ample space on both the side, on the nasopharynx side as well as pterygopalatine fossa. So this tumor, because it is depending on the testosterone, is aggressive tumor, is very destroying tumor, destructive tumor, so it grow very fast. And if you can appreciate, this, this tumor will grow bilaterally. So classically, we always call this tumor as a dumbbell-shaped tumor. Why? Because this tumor is assuming a shape of dumbbell, growing on both sides, nasopharynx and pterygopalatine fossa. So this is one of the important sites for from origin of the tumor, sphenopalatine foramen. Now since it is growing in the nasopharynx, so always, always suspect ear symptoms because somewhere in the later part of the disease, this tumor is going to press your eustachian tube. Once the eustachian tube is pressurized, we'll be having symptom of ear, patient will be having some earache or algia will be there, some other blue ear, yes, may be a possibility. So patient, so always remember three basic symptoms of angiofibroma. Most common will be apostaxis followed by nasal obstruction followed by middle ear symptoms. Differential, no, what do you think yeah. would be the differential diagnosis on the basis yeah. whenever, of the whenever findings. this presentation is there, three, four points can come in your mind. One. Again, first possibility because we have seen a reddish mass in the posterior anoscopy examination. Our first diagnosis should be in the list should be angiofibroma, juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. Second possibility, nasopharyngeal carcinoma. But again, why we are suspecting this tumor? A ideal age is somewhere 60, 70 years of nasopharyngeal carcinoma. But it is clearly documented that this tumor, nasopharyngeal carcinoma, show bimodal distribution. So one peak of this tumor sometime occur near the age of 20 years. So it is very close to the diagnosis of angiofibroma if this 20 year old boy is coming to you with a nasopharyngeal carcinoma. And one of the most you can say benign condition will be entroconal polyp. So always suspect for these three conditions whenever this type of presentation is there. What would you advise as the investigation of choice in such a presentation? What would investigation you of choice, we always, always rely on CT examination. So you Again, would a CT we scan always, scan. always so, say CT examination. So let examination. me show you a CT scan of this patient. So this is a CT scan and you are, I want you to look at the image. This is an axial CT scan of the um, nasopharyngeal area where we are looking at a non-contrast image. Look at the right side. You can see the maxillary sinus. You can well appreciate the maxillary antrum. Look at the left side. And you can see there is a soft tissue density mass. This is the nasal cavity. So this is the posterior, in the posterior nasal space, in the nasopharynx. And like Sir had rightly pointed out, it is seen extending. It is centered onto the sphenopalatine foramina. And it is seen uh, extending on both sides of the foramina like a dumbbell shape. So this is what we see on a non-contrast CT. 
But the diagnosis, because this tumor is very vascular, diagnosis is usually confirmed when we do a contrast enhanced CT. So when we give intravenous contrast, you can see how the tumor has lit up with dye. You can see how intensely enhancing the dye the tumor is. You can see the tumor in the posterior nasal space extending into the infratemporal space through the sphenopolydine foramina, like Sir had very beautifully explained in the line diagram. So on the basis of the NCCT and CECT findings, we can make the diagnosis of nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. And I also want to point out here the role of MRI. Although we, we believe that CT is the best suited investigation to look for the bony remodeling, look for the bony changes of this tumor, but when you look for orbital or an intracranial extension, yeah, you will have to do an MRI to confirm that kind of extent. Although initially we would always do a CT. Confirmative will be CT. C yeah. CT, contrast and a CT. But MRI has a role in documenting the intracranial and the intraorbital spread of this disease. And another point that I want to make here radiologically would be the bony remodeling. So whenever we have to look for bony remodeling, we look at the bone window. So we, if you look at uh, the images again, the first image that I showed you was a non-contrast CT, then I showed you a contrast and a CT, then this is a bone window. That means we are trying to alter the contrast on the screen to look at the bones better. Now when we look at it, a very striking finding is seen. What are you able to see? Can you see how the tumor has bored, it has actually pushed the posterior maxillary enteral wall anteriorly. This is very typical for nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. This is how it causes remodeling of the posterior maxillary antrum. And this is how you should compare from the other side. Yeah. This is the normal maxillary antrum. This is the abnormal. And see how the posterior wall is bored anteriorly. This is very typical. Once you see this, this is typically juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma on a CT scan. There is a role for angiography as well. Although the role is not in the diagnosis primarily, it is to tell the ENT surgeon the feeding art feeding art because there is a role of embolization that we would do before surgery so that the blood loss at the surgery is not that Absolutely. much. So this is how an external carotid artery angiogram would look like and you can see the tumor blush in the area of the tumor getting supplied from the internal maxillary artery and this is a very typical angiogram showing you the vascularity of a nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. Now, before we go onwards, I would ask Dr. Deepak to explain a sign which he has mentioned, uh, antrogonal polyp as yeah. a differential. So how do you actually look at a plain x-ray and differentiate yeah. between them? Again, this is a nice radiograph here, which is specifically for the doctors who are sitting, is sitting at somewhere in the PSC center where we are, we can't afford CT examination. This, this is one of the important findings which we always use to differentiate a angiofibroma from your antrogonal polyp, a basic conceptual point is there, okay, whenever the mass is coming from the nasopharynx, obviously when the tumor is coming from the nasopharynx, it will obstruct the whole nasal, nasopharynx, it will be touching the posterior wall, it means there will be no potential space between this tumor and the posterior wall, but if imagination, if a tumor, if a polyp is coming from nose, like entroconal polyp, we are having two polyps, it's model or entroconal, it's model polyps never extend up to so that nasopharynx, this is always entroconal polyp which is coming in the coinal area, so if the polyp is coming from nose, always there will be some potential space between the polyp and the posterior wall, it means that on the x-ray lateral view, if you see a column of air, between the mass and the posterior wall, it means sure this mass is coming somewhere from the nasal side, not from the nasopharynx or sphenopalatine foramen. So if even if you are sitting at a primary level, you can suspect you can differentiate this entrocornal polyp from angiofibroma with this we, what we call dot sign. The sir has clearly beautifully mentioned this CT finding where the posterior wall is falling down that we use at a tertiary center. We classically call that sign as a Holman Miller sign. Always remember Holman Miller sign is a classical finding of CT, but at primary level you can differentiate or with the help of this dot sign. I think I'll, now I ask Deepak to summarize the management aspect of the tumor so that you know we can complete the entire, so uh, so far I th I'm sure the uh, your listeners are clear that the diagnosis is juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, we have seen how the patient would look like, how the CT would look like, how the angiogram would look like and we have also seen how to differentiate from a 
endocrinal polyp. Yeah. Now, with this background, I'll ask Deepak to talk about the surgical aspect of the lesion. Yeah, as far as surgery is concerned, always remember, before starting the surgery segment, one point should be clearly mentioned. As a doctor, never ever go for biopsy of this tumor. Because this is a somewhere tumor of blood vessel, you will not believe the patient may die on table. Always remember, biopsy is contraindicated. Always and remember. I'm sure the students who are listening to us can actually, you know, see our sequence also. Yeah. We worked clinically immediately, went on to CT. Yeah, and, absolutely. And the CT diagnosis actually avoided the unnecessary. Yeah, biopsy. we have not done any biopsy before confirmation. You, you should appreciate this thing. We directly go on the surgical part because debulking or biopsy is always contraindicated. Never ever remove the tumor in pieces. Because we can't. Because if you remove the tumor in pieces, the patient will have so bleeding, the patient will die on table. We always say that thumb of the rule. The rule of the thumb is you have to remove the tumor in total. Yeah. We have to re remove the tumor completely. So we have the surgery is the only only basic treatment option. But always remember before surgery we use many modalities to reduce the size of the tumor. My main concern is only only blood loss during the procedure. It means we should reduce the size to significant amount so that bleeding should not be there. So before surgery we can go for chemotherapy, yes. The commonly drug which we are using is Vincristin. We are using for reducing the size of the tumor. We can use for, we can go for hormonal therapy, yes, anti-testosterone like flutamide we are using for reducing the size of the tumor. And as sir has mentioned, we go for embolization. So always remember, we basically we embolize the internal maxillary artery which is a basic feeder of this tumor. So we go for all these things to reduce the size of the tumor. Even few books clearly mention that we can go for radiotherapy to reduce the size of the tumor. So basic four modalities are there, chemo, hormonal, radio and emolization to reduce the size of the tumor. Now one on coming on the surgical side, the most common method is your endoscopic transnasal approach. This method is most common only, only if, if the patient comes to you in very early stage. If the tumor is very small, you can remove comfortably from the nose. We can go with the endoscopic transnasal approach. But when the tumor is, like I have clearly mentioned, it is going from the sphenopalate and foramen, it is a very destructive tumor. So if the tumor have gone to all these areas, nasopharynx, pharynx, and fossa, we have to be extensive in the surgery. We go for transpalatal approach. If the tumor is confined to nose, we prefer transnasal approach. Tumor in the nasopharynx, we go for transpalatal approach. If the tumor have gone to the maxillary sinus or pterygopalatine fossa, we can combine this approach transpalatal with sublabial, what we call it as sardana approach. If the tumor is further extended to the infratemporal or cranial, intracranial, we go for extensive approaches like infratemporal fossa approach or craniofacial resection. This is a specimen which we have class removed the tumor in total. Can you appreciate from we have removed the whole tumor in total. In completely we remove the whole tumor because if we remove the tumor in pieces, the patient have a high, high risk of bleeding. Then we definitely send the patient for this, this will be sent for further histopathic examination and always we have this type of star shaped fibrocytes are seen in the connective tissue with if you can appreciate very thin blood vessels will be there in the peripheral area. So this is your biopsy report after surgical exam. Yeah, question is very important. If if the tumor is so extensive, okay, you can't go for surgery. So we call it as unresectable cases. What are the options? We have two options. Either we can go for radiotherapy, very very rare. Always go for surgery. But if the tumor have extens very extensive unresectable cases, we can go for radio or chemotherapy. But always keep one point in mind. In angiofibroma, there is very very high risk of sarcomatous changes after radiotherapy. So this is a point of concern. So thank you Deepak for an extensive discussion and I, I hope the listeners actually enjoyed the way we have actually presented the patient from how he presented clinically, how he was worked up radiologically and how we actually operated and what was the histological finding. This is the entire goal of this unplugged series. We want to create integrated videos where we are doing things in total like he removed the tumor in total. We want to look at an aspect of a disease in total. I hope you enjoyed this series. Do write back to me, Sumer Sethi or Dr. Deepak Arora on Facebook, Twitter, wherever you want to inbox us. Do let us know if you enjoy this series and do follow us on Damn City channel on YouTube. We look forward to hearing from you. That encourages us to do more work. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you.